Welcome to today's presentation celebrating Alaska Women's Veterans Day. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and all participants are in a watch and listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for questions at the end of today's presentation and you can ask questions using the Q&A option below or raise your hand for us to unmute you to come on to speak. If you have dialed in via telephone, please use star nine to raise your hand. If you require technical assistance, please use the Q&A feature and we'll begin shortly. Thank you so much, Susan. It's an honor to welcome everyone to this event. My name is Vanessa Mead and I'm a US Army veteran and an assistant professor at the University of Alaska School of Social Work. We are here today on Alaska Women Veterans Day to honor all women veterans living in Alaska and to launch a new project called Operation Mary Louise. The purpose of this community-based project is to increase invisibility of women veterans in Alaska and to connect women veterans to resources and their communities. Colonel Mary Louise Milligan Rasmussen served for 20 years in the Women's Army Corps and was the Commandant of the Women's Army Corps for five years. She moved to Alaska after marrying Elmer Rasmussen and retiring from the Army, where she continued to serve her community as a philanthropist, advocate, and trailblazer. You'll be learning more about her and Operation Mary Louise project throughout today's event. We would especially like to thank the Rasmussen Foundation, the Alaska Community Foundation for funding this project through the Women Veterans Fund and their continual support for women veterans in Alaska. Next, I'd like to introduce Katie St. John, the Vice President of Programs for the Alaska Community Foundation, who has also done so much to support Operation Mary Louise. Thank you, Katie. Hi, Vanessa, thanks for having us here today. Um, on behalf of ACF, I would just like to say how honored we are to work with Vanessa and Penny, and through them, the UAA School of Social Work. Also, the Rasmussen Foundation, of course, who are incredible, incredibly generous supporters of this project, and the Alaska Public Media. Um, when we learned about the incredible number of Alaska women veterans who are so wonderfully serving their communities, yet don't feel connected, don't have access to the services and supports that they have earned and who don't feel seen, we were, we were very excited to be partners in this. Um, so thank you all for being here today. And we look forward to seeing how Operation Mary Louise grows to meet your needs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katie. So next we'd like to introduce, we have uh, three videos from uh, the governor, Go Governor Dunleavy, Senator Sullivan, and Senator Murkowski. Hello, Alaskans. Today we honor the brave Alaskan women who have answered the call of service. From America's founding to the wars of today, women have always participated in the defense of our nation, but too often their sacrifices are overlooked. As we honor our veterans this week, today is set aside to acknowledge these courageous women. This Alaska Women Veterans Day is extra special thanks to the launch of Operation Mary Louise. Named after Alaskan pioneer, Colonel Mary Louise Rasmussen, this program will benefit more than 10,000 women veterans in Alaska. It's an unfortunate reality that women veterans are not getting the help they're entitled to. In fact, over one third of women veterans are not signed up for VA health services. Too often these heroes are not referred to VA services because their veteran status is not identified. This program aims to change that through advocacy and education, and I'm grateful for each of you working hard to make Operation Mary Louise a success. Thank you for this opportunity to express my gratitude to our women veterans. Before I go, I'd like to share my 2020 Women's Veterans Day proclamation with you. Whereas women have a long and often unrecognized history of military service to our nation, dating as far back as the American Revolution, proudly serving in unofficial capacities alongside and in support of our nation's military. And whereas since the formation of the Army Nurse Corps in 1901, women have officially been recognized as part of the United States Armed Forces and for their valuable contributions to our nation's defense. And whereas Alaska is honored to pay tribute to and remember the American female veterans who have bravely and nobly served in the military in defense of our nation. 
Over 9,000 women veterans call Alaska home, and we are proud of the contributions they make in our communities. And where is the Center of Women's Veterans Advocates for Cultural Transformation to raise awareness about the service and sacrifice of women veterans? Whereas in honor of Mary Louise Rasmussen, a female veteran, many have gathered together to fill the gap that many women veterans fall through in order to provide resources and support to our courageous women who have fought to serve our country. The Operation Mary Louise Project seeks to make women veterans more visible and supported in the way they deserve. Whereas in 2000, the Alaska State Legislature officially recognized our nation's women veterans in Alaska statute, declaring November 9th of each year to be Women's Veterans Day, acknowledging women veterans' countless contributions and increasing role in the military. And whereas on this day, we salute and remember the women who fearlessly served our nation, and we honor our female veterans and their families for their outstanding service, sacrifice, and remarkable dedication to our nation. Now, therefore, I, Mike Dunleavy, Governor of the State of Alaska, do hereby proclaim November 9th, 2020, as Women Veterans Day in Alaska, and encourage all Alaskans to recognize and honor the valor and contributions of generations of American servicewomen and their families who have proudly served our great state and nation by safeguarding our land, people, freedoms, and legacy. Greetings, everybody, and I'm so honored to say a few words as we celebrate Alaska's, Alaska's Women's Veterans Day and the launch of Operation Mary Louise. Now, of course, uh, this is a great story. It's really intertwined with the great story of Alaska. Colonel Mary Louise Rasmussen was a courageous, pioneering woman, the fifth director of the Women's Army Corps, and like so many uh, Alaskans made her way to our great state with her husband, Elmer, uh, to the last frontier after her military service, but continued her service to her community. And as we all know, the positive impact of the Rasmussen family, uh, generation after generation, cannot be overstated for our great state. So thank you, thank you, thank you to that incredible family. But this is a story that I love to talk about. Um, you know, because we have so many veterans, uh, we celebrate that a lot, but we still have challenges. There's no, about, no, no doubt about that. Let's, let me just give you a couple statistics. Less than one third of women veterans in Alaska are receiving the services they have earned. Less than one third. That is way, way, way too low. That's a tragedy. And so I am so appreciative of all the work that you are doing with Operation Mary Louise to change that. And uh, working together, and a lot of us have been uh, with my position on the Veterans Affairs Committee, we are working to change this. Let me just give you two examples of legislation that I'm working on. Again, with your input, that is really focused on changing this issue with um, women veterans to make sure they get the services that they have earned. The first piece of legislation I just wanna briefly mention is what's called the HELP Act. Now, I've learned in the Senate, if you can get a nice acronym for legislation, a lot of times it can get attention. The HEALTH Act stands for Helping Expand and Launch Transitional Health for Women, HEALTH Act. And that's a bill I introduced, it's already been voted out of the Veterans Affairs Committee last April that would launch a pilot program to better connect female veterans to the VA services that they already have, to get the VA focused on exactly doing what Operation Mary Louise is all about. The second one is the Deborah Sampson Act, which also came out of committee last January, which I've co-sponsored. And again, this is very focused on women's veterans issues. The issues like my health act that are unique to women veterans. Sorry, men, sometimes you don't have the same issues. And so this one would actually, the uh, Deborah Sampson Act would actually establish within the VA an Office of Women's Health. Believe it or not, the VA doesn't have that already. So we wanna thank all of you. We wanna thank all of our women veterans for the great, um, great job you've done, not just for America, but for Alaska, and let, you, and let you know that we are working together with so many who are driving the Operation Mary Louise uh, to make more progress. 
Uh, I wanna thank in particular, <clears throat> Dr. Vanessa Mead for your leadership in bringing this great coalition together. And again, a special thank you on this Veterans Day to all of our women veterans for doing your great part in protecting our great nation and serving our great state. Have a great event. Please let me, please know my door is always open. We're gonna make continued progress on these important issues. Hello, and thank you for allowing me to join you by video for this very special event. Women have courageously and honorably served in our military since our country's inception. From the Revolutionary War, when Molly Pitcher took command over a cannon after her husband fell wounded on the battlefield, to the thousands of women who served in the Nurse Corps and Women's Army Corps during the First and Second World Wars. And gradually, over time, women were allowed to enlist, then attend the service academies, become fighter pilots, infantry officers, army rangers, and finally the ban was removed from women serving in combat. Included among these strong women was the namesake of today's event, the late Colonel Mary Louise Rasmussen, who was named director of the Women's Army Corps by President Eisenhower during World War II. Mrs. Rasmussen is well known for helping expand opportunities for women serving in the military, including being awarded the Legion of Merit Award for her progress dating toward integrating Black women into the Corps. Following her service, Mary Louise joined her husband Elmer in Alaska, where together they built a legacy as civic leaders and philanthropists. Operation Mary Louise will be a resource for women veterans around the state. This new website will not only ensure our female veterans are acknowledged and appreciated, but that they're connected and have access to the resources and the support that they need and have earned. I commend you for acknowledging the service of the many women who have served our nation and for making their well-being a priority. To all our female veterans out there, thank you. If Colonel Rasmussen were here today, I'm sure that she would join me in saying, we are proud of who you are and all you have done. We owe so much to you. God bless you, your families, and your sisters in arms. Thank you, Senator Murkowski, Senator, Senator Sullivan, and Governor Dunleavy for your remarks and support of women veterans in Alaska and the Operation Mary Louise Project. Now I'd like to introduce Judy Rasmussen. Judy is the daughter of Elmer Rasmussen and stepdaughter to Colonel Mary Louise Rasmussen. She is a member of Rasmussen Foundation Board of Directors. Thank you for joining us today, Judy. Thank you. Glad to be here. Um, on my bookshelf is a very dreamy picture of Mary Louise Milligan standing in an evening gown while her mother Mimi, slightly to the rear, adjusts the first stole around Mary Louise's shoulders. ML is bejeweled and coiffed with her premature white stri stripe accentuating her prominent widow's peak. She's about to attend a swanky DC soiree. In another picture I have of Mary Louise, she is wearing a plaid flannel overshirt, hip boots and holding a salmon, a recently dead salmon. When the evening attire photo was taken, ML couldn't have envisioned that later dead salmon picture. She was still in Washington DC, living at the Watergate, head of the wax and unmarried. She was Colonel Milligan, active duty, with a driver in a Pentagon office. She had come from the ranks, entering the wax in the first class of enlistees and had risen to the pinnacle. For most people, her achievements would be a career, a lifetime. That evening gown to Mary Louise could have stretched out and that could have remained the sum of a successful life. Then she met my father, Elmer Rasmussen. I have a mental snapshot of her on her exploratory trip to Alaska to meet the children to see what is this Alaska and whether marriage would be for her. We three children, teenagers, were polite, courteous, curious, and in retrospect set a few traps for her. We took her fishing out on the lake, showed her how to catch trout, which she did, and then informed her that he who catches cleans. Ooh, okay. She learned to gut and clean trout that day. She had passed our test 
but that was the last day she fished for rainbows with us children. Dad and Mary Louise were married one year later. She retired from the military one year after that and moved to Alaska full time. Imagine the change for this dynamic woman. The year was 1962, not particularly an era of women's rights, nor was she given to marches or protests. How did this woman who had been a leader, calling her own shots, living on a plane with other movers and shakers adapt to married life in Alaska, far from the world that has shaped her adult self, far from her milieu of European capitals and Washington culture and power? For Mary Louise, she dealt with the bumps of married life and Alaskan frontier with the pragmatism and strength that were her hallmarks. She embraced becoming an Alaskan with all the can-do that she was made of. Though never having children, she had a fine sense of how to deal with my teenage angst. I was ready to rebel against any authority, particularly a new stepmother. She easily sidestepped all the confrontations that could have erupted, making it clear that she was not going to mother me, but was a source of advice if wanted. On ML's 80th birthday, my sister and I joined her at a small luncheon in Washington that was thrown by her fellow wax. Elizabeth Hoisington, who had succeeded ML at the wax, Mary Halloran, who had preceded ML's command, plus several of the ladies that were in the initial enlist, excuse me, enlistee groups. Now, all these ladies were 80 years and older, no spring chicken, and they were short and hilariously funny, irreverent. They called her Mary Lou. They were sisters in arms. That was another snapshot of Mary Louise. The abilities that Mary Louise acquired and honed in the wax transferred to her Alaskan world. Leaders were needed here as well as in Washington. She eventually took on an Anchorage Historical Society, raised the money, and shepherded this local organization to, into a world-class museum of the Circumpolar Circum North. Her leadership continued for many years as she oversaw the museum's growth and expansion into the premier museum that it is today. The Anchorage Museum at the Rasmussen Center has the finest collections of Northern artifacts, culture, and art. This is in large part due to the vision and extraordinary leadership of Mary Louise Milligan Rasmussen. She was engaged right up to her end. Shortly before she died, ML met with representatives of Alaskan Veterans for Women and pledged her support for their efforts to enlarge opportunities for Alaskan women vets. Veterans were close to her heart. Vanessa, she would applaud your leadership today. Thank you all for joining me. Back to you, Vanessa. Thank you so much, Judy. Thank you for sharing those beautiful words about and stories about Mary Louise. I was fortunately one of the ones that got to meet her that day and it's just amazing to sit with her. So thank you. Thank you and, and thank the Rasmussen Foundation, Foundation as well, as well as the rest of your family. We really appreciate all of your support. And I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention Diane Kaplan and her support, as well as Nina Kimple. And so I would just want to thank you as well. Next, I would like to introduce Monique Andrews. Monique is a member of the Alaska Army National Guard and manages the Guard's program of resilience, risk reduction, and suicide prevention. Thank you for being here today, Monique. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, good day. It is an honor to be here with you speaking about the great work and efforts of Colonel Mary Louise Rasmussen. Her work in fighting for the rights and inclusion of all women into the Army Corps was instrumental in women receiving the services, resources, and benefits that they were due. It is so fitting that we are here today to continue her legacy through Operation Mary Louise, which is a statewide organization for the sole purpose of keeping women veterans connected to those services, resources, and benefits. Currently, women are the fastest growing veteran group, making up about 10% of the US veteran population. Women veterans, as they separate from service, face a unique set of circumstances. 
they are asked to continue to navigate systems that are primarily centered and focused around men. In fact, it has only been 30 years since the inception of the Women Veterans Health Care Program. So it's really important for us to recognize that women veterans services are, are needed and warranted. Women veterans experience uh, homelessness at higher rates compared to male veterans, as well as increased rates of sexual assault compared to their male counterparts. Currently, women veterans are twice as likely to die by suicide than are their civilian counterparts. We know that veterans who are connected with VA services may have a lower risk for suicide than those who are not connected with services. Some of the reasons why individuals contemplate or attempt suicide uh, is because they have what is commonly referred to in therapy as the, the cognitive triad. What do I think about what's happening to me right now? What do I think others think about what's happening to me right now? And what does that mean for me in the future? Sometimes that cognitive triad kind of uh, has folks in a space of hopelessness and helplessness. And when someone is hopeless, that there's no hope for the future and there's, they're helpless and there's nothing that I can do about it, it really creates moments of despair. But luckily, a key factor in preventing increased risk factors such as hopelessness and helplessness is social connectedness and social support, which is what makes Operation Mary Louise such a unique project with its central focus on keeping women veterans connected, connected to each other, connected to resources, connected to services, connected to benefits. Colonel Rasmussen joined the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps during a time when women were kept from receiving credit and, and barred from many of the benefits. She embarked on an unbelievable task and because of her efforts, opportunities for women in the military continue to grow. So it is so, such a great honor for me to be able to speak to you as a soldier in the Alaska Army National Guard and as um, an employee who works to prevent suicide and to increase resiliency. One of the most um, one of the most resilient things that we can do is staying connected. So I just wanna say thank you all for being here. Thank you for your time and thank you for coming to celebrate such a great organization, Operation Mary Louise. Thanks. Thank you, Monique. Really appreciate you being here today. So next I would like to introduce Penny. Chapney, who is a Marine veteran, a good friend of mine, and the co-chair of our um, steering committee for Operation Mary Louise. So, Penny? Thank you, Vanessa. Um, hi, everyone. It's an honor to be here, and I'm very blessed by Alaska Community Foundation in pairing me up with Vanessa Mead and being part of Operation Mary Louise. It's an honor to be here. Um, so we are looking for the slides that we're going to go over now. Um, so uh, for Operation Mary Louise, we had several goals for this project and we started this last year um, and with COVID we've had to make some changes. So we certainly appreciate everyone being adaptive and joining us here. Um, as Monique said, it is all about connection that really help us. So the goals of Operation Mary Louise is to connect women veterans with resources that can assist them to increase women veterans using VA services and decrease the impact of the myth about the VA services. The third goal is to increase the visibility of the women's veterans in Alaska. So we want to make sure that we see um, our women veterans and to make sure that we identify those that are serving in our great state. Um, so in addition to that, in our next slides, we'll talk about the resources. So we have resources for women veterans, and you'll see this on the Operation Mary Louise website as well. Um, we have the VA Women's Veterans um, uh, Program that's uh, at our local VA in Anchorage. Um, there's a phone number, and Anna, and I'll, show, I'll introduce you to her in just a minute. 
Um, you can get assistance with getting VA ID cards and eligibility, and we have a phone number for that. Um, there's also the State of Alaska's Office of Veteran Affairs with Brody Brown and Forrest Powell, and we thank them for being here today. I saw the note um, from Brody um, in the chat earlier, so we certainly appreciate Brody and Forrest. And then we also have the Alaska Coalition for Veterans and Military Families with David, and we have his contact information there. So if you'll take a look at our website, um, it is up and running and you'll see more resources on our website and we'll continue to update those as well. And our website, of course, is operationmarylouise.org. Um, so next up, we have Anna Bolivic and she is the VA Women's Veterans Program Manager. And Anna will be speaking to you next. So Vanessa, thank you for this opportunity. And with that, I'll turn it over to Anna. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us in this endeavor to launch Operation Mary Louise. It is an honor to be here. I would like to thank Vanessa, Penny, and many others who have worked numerous hours in support of Operation Mary Louise, their service to our country, and to the women of our armed forces. My name is Anna Bullardick, and I am the Women Veterans Program Manager here in Alaska. The VA and Operation Mary Louise have a common goal, and that is to advocate for all female veterans. At the VA, we have comprehensive designated women's health providers. We provide acute and chronic care, gender specific care, such as mammograms and cervical cancer screenings, reproductive care, OB care in the community, immunizations and flu clinics, along with mental health for MST, depression, anxiety, and PTSD. We also provide whole health to our veterans with such programs as the MOVE and yoga classes. Here at the Alaska VA, we collaborate with many outside organizations, such as Operation Mary Louise. We also have a very active volunteer organization. The VA is very proud to partner with Operation Mary Louise to advocate, offer quality health care, and to be a resource for our female veterans. Thank you and happy Women's Veterans Day. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for being here too. And for all you do for women veterans as well through the VA. So I'd also like to just take a moment and thank our steering committee for, for all of their work. Uh, we have um, over 10 different organizations on our steering committee that worked uh, to bring together uh, all of us to really work on changing um, and it, making sure that more women are getting signed up for services uh, through the VA and other community organizations. So I just wanna thank the steering committee and they're also listed on our website. So you can go on there and it has all of our steering committee members on the website as well. So next I would like to talk about uh, Alaska Public Media. They have done um, a couple of videos for our media campaign, which is gonna be starting this week. So the media campaign will, will have radio spots uh, and the, the um, Cheryl Austin and her team, Alaska Public Media have created these videos that we're gonna show next. So when we're ready, we can start those. Operation Mary Louise, a new community-based statewide women veterans visibility project is named after Mary Louise Rasmussen, a retired colonel who served as director of the Women's Army Corps and paved the way for so many women in the military. After leaving military service, she continued to serve the community here in Alaska and her legacy is honored with the Operation Mary Louise project. To learn more and to become involved, please sign up at OperationMaryLouise.org. Are you a woman in Alaska who has served in the military? There's a new Alaska Women Veterans Visibility Project called Operation Mary Louise. The goal is to reach women veterans so they can learn about the benefits they've earned and create community for women veterans in Alaska. To learn more about Operation Mary Louise, connect with resources for women veterans, and to be involved in the project, please sign up at OperationMaryLouise.org.
Hi, everyone. And thank you, women veterans. I am Angela Cox, VP of External Affairs at Rasmussen Foundation. And I am here to help moderate the Q&A portion of the agenda. So as a reminder, if you are using the Zoom platform, there are two ways to submit your question. You can enter a question using the Q&A feature below. If you go down to the bottom of your screen, you should see two little chat boxes that say Q&A underneath. Click on that and you can enter your Q&A there or your question there. Um, or you can click the raise hand button and we will call on you and unmute you to speak. We'd love to hear your voice if possible. And if you are calling in via the phone today, you can press star nine um, to get your question in that way. So I'm going to try to do the Zoom dance between the Q&A and the raise hand feature. Do we have any questions? Yeah, we have a couple. So we're going to move to Katkin. Katkin, are you there? I am here. I'm just unmuted. <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to being muted. This is a <laughs> this is a great Zoom format. I've never uh, experienced it before, but it's it's really super because it's great having like full visibility of the panelists and the and the slides, which sometimes you don't when there's like multiple attendees showing up on a screen. Um, but I just wanted to um, state what a great what a great um, job everybody's done in pulling this together and thank you so much uh, for the great presentations and um, it's just want you to know that as the president of the local captain cook chapter of the military officers association and as a retired marine or once a marine always evolving is my new saying um we're in, we're in full support and whatever we can do to uh support and further these efforts um um yeah so it's it's a question and answer in one and um I would like to know, um, other than going to the web website, how we can encourage um, other women veterans and then organizations to partner and collaborate with Operation Mary Louise. Yeah, thank you, Katkin, and it's good to good to hear your voice. Um, really appreciate all you're doing too. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, we also, just so people know, we also have a Facebook uh, page. You can you can get updated information on there about things that are happening and activities going on. Uh, we have an Instagram and we'll also be having uh, monthly meetings to where we can get together um, both as women veterans. And if you're interested in being um, on the working committee for Operation Mary Louise, please shoot us an email too. We'd love to have you. And thank you for the support of the Military Officers Association, too. We really appreciate that, Katkin. Yeah. Hoorah. <laughs> okay, I'm, you can mute me again. I'm not sure how to do it here. <laughs> All right, thank you, Katkin. I am getting a question from Chris Narose. How can women veterans outside of Anchorage and the Rail Belt access services? That is a great question, and that's one of the one of the things that we really want to work on is outreach and, and ensuring that people in rural and remote areas also um, women veterans are also seen, heard, and acknowledged, and also are able to access services. So um, we do have resources that are listed um, on the website for different regions of Alaska. So there's people that um, can help in those areas that we have listed in those resources as well as if you contact us through Operation Mary Louise, we'll connect you with um, organizations that can be helpful. So please feel free to reach out. I've lived in rural Alaska and I, I, I just know also, um, you know, how remote it is and, and we really wanna create community there too. And, and the, 
Uh, one of the things um, that has happened because of COVID, we are having monthly meetings. And so we would really love to have you join us for those as well, because we share, we share a lot of resources. We are very resilient as women veterans. And we also are really good at sharing resources and, and knowing what, uh, what can help other people if it's helped us. So please join us at those, on those meetings and we'll post those meetings on uh, the Facebook page as well as through email. So if you go on and sign up uh, to the, uh, sign up on the, uh, website will also make sure that you get that information when it's when we do those meetings. We're having a monthly right now. Great. Okay, Vanessa, I have another question from an attendee. It says, I am a social worker who is going into clinical practice. Could you speak towards what evidence-based practices are being used to serve veterans in a therapeutic setting? Are there new service interventions being researched or developed? Sure. Um, so I can speak to that. I'm wondering also um, if Anna from the VA perspective might want to say something about this. So Anna, if you do, please chime in. Um, there are all sorts. We also have um, a new clinic in town. It's a, the Cohen uh, Clinic, which is uh, specifically for veterans. And they have a lot of evidence-based programs that they use, including um, cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, there's uh, trauma, trauma-informed care around uh, all sorts of services that they have there. They work with families too. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of specific um, different modalities that are being used and researched. Uh, the VA is um, does a lot of exposure-based therapy and uh, different uh, different types of cognitive behavioral. Um, they are moving more towards um, some peer support, which has been proven to be super effective too. And so that's one of the one of the areas of working with peers uh, in a therapeutic environment with a therapist is um, one of the things that's really been helpful as well. So there's lots of different uh, and kind of depends on the uh, therapist a lot of times as to what their specific um, type modality is, but um, there, there's definitely different types of, of therapy and also um, recreation therapy, something that's been shown to be huge for uh, veterans because uh, veterans don't always like to go in and sit and talk about their feelings. And um, I, I'm, a, I'm a therapist myself and have been. And, um, you know, sometimes there's some barriers for some people around around seeking therapeutic services, but but through uh, recreational therapy and doing um, outdoor activities together and uh, those types of programs, uh, those have also been uh, really showing to be, they're doing more research on those and there's been more support uh, financially behind those as well. So thank you for the question. And if you have any other questions, feel free to contact me. And I don't see a question, but I do wanna read this comment from Tracy. She says, I am excited to look at the website and see what resources are available. I am part of the demographic you mentioned who has not tapped into any services, even though I am a Navy veteran. I have tried a couple of times to get information, but have found it difficult. I also think connecting women veterans in Alaska is a great idea, and I look forward to those. I am outside Delta Junction and find it very difficult to access information and services. Oh, Tracy, we're so glad you're here. So thank you. And yeah, please reach out. This is what we're here for. And this is why we really, we really want to reach out to beyond Anchorage, beyond Fairbanks, you know, and really, really also have um, access and information to people out in rural and village areas too. So please, uh, please join us and, and thank you for your comment and we appreciate you. Now we have Tess Williams. Hey all, this is Tess Williams from Anchorage Daily News. I think it was mentioned on the press release that fewer than a third of women veterans in Alaska are signed up for VA health services. Why is that? Well, again, Anna, if you want to chime in here, uh, she's the Women Veteran Program Coordinator. She she can, but I can I can say um, I think there's a lot of times women vets don't know that they're qualified for services. Uh, that's one of the biggest barriers I know from doing tables. Whenever I was uh, doing outreach and stuff for women veterans, a lot of times uh, it's one of the questions that you can ask instead of saying, "Did are you a veteran?" Is to ask, "Did you serve in the military?" Because a lot of times women will say they served in the military before they will identify as a veteran. And so that's one of the ways that um, we can also work to outreach more. Um, but I think I think a lot of it is just not knowing or like what Tracy said, being out in an area and not being able to connect or drive to an area to uh, like the VA. And so there's a lot of resources and 
you know, the uh, Alaska Department of Military and Veterans Affairs has done a lot and they will continue to do a lot to outreach to uh, more rural areas and they're also a part of this. So please contact us and we'll get you all connected. Yes, I would like to agree with Vanessa. Um, most of the women, uh, when you say veteran, they think of men. So we try to use the term, did you serve? Um, and it is our goal, my goal, our goal, to reach all female veterans, um, whether you're out rurally in the community where um, uh, we may not be able to see you here at the Alaska VA, but maybe we have a C block out there somewhere um, or even get you services with the VA, but you see a community care provider. Um, that means you're still part of the VA, but we're paying for your care outside in the community. Thank you, Anna. Great. We have a couple of questions about how to find Operation Mary Louise on Facebook and the webpage name. Great. Um, the webpage name is operationmarylouise.org. You can just put that in and that will show up. Um, and you can also on Facebook, it's Operation Mary Louise. So there's a Facebook page and uh, the website and we are on Instagram too. So please like us on there so we can send stuff out and you can get it that way as well. We're trying to really get our social media up so we can um, contact people and have uh, that instantaneous contact that happens through social media. Okay, we got a note saying that Q&A, we were having some technical issues with accepting questions. So we have reopened the chat. If anyone has questions and one wants to submit it that way, I'll also look out for questions there. I also wanna take an opportunity to thank the Rasmussen Foundation, all of, all of the crew that's been organizing and helping with this event today. You all are amazing to work with and just appreciating you. We're so proud to support it, Vanessa. Thank you. Let's see. Just a quick comment from Julie Farley. She says, I lived in Alaska 25 years before I knew I was eligible for VA health care. Thank you for this initiative. Ah, oh, thank you, Julie. And you know, and that's and that's the why we're doing this, because so often we don't hear about or we don't. Um, we don't uh, either one think we, you know, and there's myths around this too that I really, a part of, as part of this project, you know, there's this myth that if I use services at the VA, I'm taken away from somebody else. That's not true. What's actually true is we get more funding if you sign up. And it's not about taking, you using services isn't about taking away anything from anyone else. So please, yeah, that's, that's a big myth we all need to work. And also just as women that, oh, that's for somebody else. No, step in, you've served, you deserve this. And we all wanna support you in getting what you need. And also connecting and having social connection for women vets in Alaska. And here's another question. Can you sign up for VA Health Care on the Operation Mary Louise website? No, but it has direct uh, links to people to call to do that. Um, you have to go through eligibility um, to if you're not signed up for VA services and the VA eligibility number is on there and they will find uh, there's also VA one stop, which is great if you have any questions about VA uh, services there's a there's VA one stop on there, and th their specific job is to make sure that you get connected with what you need. So if you call that number. Um, that's and if and also Anna's numbers on there who's the women veteran program coordinator uh, manager sorry Anna. Um, but we, we don't have a direct way yet, but maybe someday there'll be a way to link into that. We'll see. Vanessa, if I can chime in real quick. Yes, um, I just want to uh, just want to let all the um, participants know that um, we also have a Facebook page and I use that Facebook page a lot along with emails. Um, flyers, sending out to all the other organizations out in the community. Um, but VA, um, Anchorage VA Healthcare on Facebook is another good resource to find out what's going on, what's, avail what's available out there. Uh, today, we just had a Women's Veterans Day um, curbside uh, barbecue lunch 
and that was posted on um, the Facebook. So that's another place to get information of what's going on in the local VA and our CBOX. And I also, yeah, thank you, Anna. I also just want to acknowledge the extra isolation that's happening right now with COVID. And so, you know, we're going to be having these monthly meetings. And if we need, you know, if we want to do them more often, we can do that too. Um, because it's really about creating community for women veterans. So please uh, reach out. Um, and uh, if you are feeling isolated or you're having a difficult time, um, let's get you connected to some resources because this is, this is what we're here for. And, and, and there's no shame in getting help. This is a really tough time for everybody and um, you deserve services just like anybody else as a veteran. I also, I think I see Melissa's comment there, Angela, um, around, uh, this is a this is also another common thing for women is that um, you know going into the uh, some of the VFWs or things like that um, is you know because a lot of times they are alcohol and they have um, uh, you know bar or canteen kind of atmosphere and so we're also really trying to create community outside of that along with linking with them for the types of services that they do provide that can be helpful for women but um, it's really important for us to have ways to connect outside of drinking and that kind of thing as well. So appreciate that, Melissa. And I hope you join us too. So we have a handful of questions. Here's one from Becky Strub. Anna, how many veteran clients do you support in a given week, month, year? I can tell you that we have about 10,240 veterans in Alaska and the VA system here in Alaska only serves about 25 to 2,600 of those veterans. So it is our goal to get veterans to come in and um, get their health care through us. Um, so yeah, we don't have a lot of veterans that um, come into the VA, and I think it's because they think they can't get care here. Okay, here's another question from Tracy, who says, I am Alaska Native. I have tried to go to the VA hospital, but I was told I have to keep using my Indian Health Services. I am signed up for VA Health Services. I work for the Indian Health Services, so I don't want my coworkers to know my problems, but I've been turned away. Who can speak to this issue? I think Anna can speak to that and, uh, you know, contacting Anna about, about how to make that work. Is that correct, Anna? Yes, 100%. Um, Give me a call um, and let's see if we can't get uh, you in with the right people. But one thing I do know um, for women veterans or even male veterans, you don't know what you don't know. It is a big organization. And if someone says, you know, you don't qualify for that. Well, if you think they, maybe they're wrong, things change every day in, in medical field, in the VA. And um, so let's look into that, see what's going on, um, because I don't think that means you do not qualify. Um, maybe they didn't answer the question right or they did not understand what was going on. Um, but reach out, give me a call. I'll be glad to um, get you to where you need to go and let's get the correct answers. And I'd also like to say too, vet centers are really helpful as well. Um, they're an arm of the VA, but they're a more confidential arm of the VA. And they serve people who have um, women who've experienced any kind of military sexual trauma um, and also combat veterans. So if there's anything like, uh, there's uh, the Alaska uh, vet centers um, and those, there's several of those throughout the state um, that can also, you can connect with. We did have a question someone wrote will rasmussen foundation have future input into operation mary louise and i just want to share that we remain committed to being involved and we um, participate in the regular committee meetings very glad to support yeah i'm also seeing um, diane's comment which is really important that um, if you've signed up for something like maybe um, the housing uh, uh, the va uh, I'm blanking on the name of it right now, but it, to help you get a VA loan, that's, or if you signed up for another service, it's different than the health service. And so the health service, you have to, it's a specific um, place, it's a specific uh, type of service that you need to sign up for. 
So um, sometimes we think we're enrolled in a, in a program and we're not because like, like Anna said, it's a big system, it's a complicated system. And we're really, that's why we're really trying to get women veterans to connect with us so that we can get you to the resources that you need um, and that we can help you navigate the difficulties that sometimes happen with big systems. So please reach out. Um, and it's really important to understand too that um, when people get off active duty, they're not automatically signed up for the VA. So there's a gap there as well. And so um, they're doing work to try to do that with the transition, which is one of the things Operation Mary Louise did on early on last year was to work with uh, J Bear and some transition assistance uh, things. And that's kind of in place now. And there's some federal mandates around that as well. But really, um, a lot of times many people get out and they don't even know that they're qualified for services and things. So please, please reach out. We have a question from Crystal that I'll read. Thank you so much for this. I am a 100% service connected veteran. I have private insurance through my husband's work. I have always heard it is hard to get appointments at the VA and wait times are long. Is this a myth? Anna, would you like to take that? Oh, you're not, you're muted, Anna. Sorry. <laughs> So yes, um, it is uh, not hard to get an appointment here. Um, we have 20 days or less to get you in to an appointment. If for some reason you are not able to get in in that time frame and you need to get in, we can always send you out into the community. So just because you're not seen within the VA does not mean we cannot offer services outside of the VA. You can have a, um, a community care provider. You can have a provider here at the VA. Um, a lot of our services for uh, female vets are specialized services such as mammograms. Um, we send those out. So um, we do not do mammography here within the VA. However, we send you out to have those services and we get all the information back into the VA and it's under one umbrella. All your chart information is here. Um, same with OB care. If we have younger uh, female vets on the line, OB care, we do take care of OB. We do not deliver babies in the VA. However, we will send you out in the community and um, get you care out in the community. Yeah, and one of the things too, Anna, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, the more that women sign up, the more services we'll actually get through the VA as well. Yes, I think so. I think uh, we have come a long way and I think uh, we have a lot long, a longer way to go. But the more female veterans that are utilizing the VA, the more services we're going to be able to offer. That's like anything, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, are there any more questions? Vanessa, I think that we lost Angela. Um, but oh, we, did okay. have, we did have a question. Um, how can people donate to Operation Mary Louise? And I believe Diane is with us and Diane Kaplan is with us and would like to answer that question. That'd be great. Diane, are hey you there. there? Yes, I am, thank you. Um, all you need to do is go to Operation Mary Louise, and on the top right is a donate uh, word. Just click on donate, and that can get you in to make a donation for Operation Mary Louise. And there was also a question about Rasmussen's continued involvement with the fund, and we have set up an endowment fund at the Alaska Community Foundation that will provide annual support for Alaska women Veterans Activities and other donors are ExxonMobil and the Weinberg Foundation. Thank you so much, Diane. Any other questions? I'm seeing people putting information in them, which is great in the chat. Um, hi, just very quickly. Um, I did see a question on, um, we've talked about Mary Louise and integrating women of color. And someone would like to get some more information about 
what she did regarding that. I'm not sure who can speak to it. I'm more than happy to speak to it, but would you like to speak to that, Diane? No, you go ahead, Vanessa. Okay. Um, so on, on our website, we have some information about that. And um, she was key in uh, integrating the military. And uh, one of her awards was actually for that. And so, you know, that's another aspect um, in the veteran community is that we want to really make sure that we're also um, inclusive and outreaching to, um, you know, uh, to people of color, to LGBTQ, to um, all, all women are welcome um, in our, in, in this, uh, in services, in programs we have, um, there's an LGBTQ uh, service coordinator, but also going back to, um, you know, the, Mary Louise, um, her work was just, and, and this is one of the things about this program too. Um, I can send you other resources about, um, if you email me, whoever asked that question to, I can send you some resources to some, uh, the documents that, um, that Mary Louise, that outlines the, the work that Mary Louise did in this area. And there's a lot, there's quite a bit of it on our website too. But um, one, of the, one of the things that just, uh, is really important, I think, to me and to a lot of people is that, you know, a lot of people know about Mary Louise as a philanthropist and this amazing, after she, you know, left the army and came here, but she was this amazing person in the army too. And, and so a lot of people don't even know that Mary Louise was in the military. And so we just really, as an arm of this also is just honoring her legacy and the work that she did on integrating the military. And uh, so we're, we're wanting to reach out to um, Alaska Native women, um, you know, people of color. I mean, we really want everybody involved in this project. So please, please um, reach out, sign up. Let's, let's get involved and let's, let's uh, make women veterans more visible here in Alaska. Vanessa? Yes. There's a question from someone asking, how can I help? Well, we'd love to have you involved in the working committee. Absolutely. Um, as we're, uh, you know, continuing projects, as we're uh, developing this, getting people more, more and more people signed up around activities, the steering committee, uh, there's lots of opportunities to be involved. And so uh, also in um, our, we have in the monthly meetings, what we've been doing too is having uh, guest speakers. And so if there's something that you want to know about um, or you as a woman veteran can speak about, we would love to have you um, do that as well. And so uh, there's lots of ways to get uh, connected and to work together. And uh, we're really, really trying to create a community here and um, get, get women connected to resources that we, we all deserve. So um, the, the best way right now is to get signed up uh, through the website so that we, you get on the email list. And then um, we're also collecting photos because one of the goals, one of the things that we wanna do is also have a page of women veterans, um, uh, of, of photos of women veterans and have like an online women veteran uh, photo project. So if you can and would love, would like to, we would love for you to, there's a place on the sign up form. You don't have to, but there's a place on there. And also just to let you know, we don't share our contact information. I know that's really important to a lot of people. We don't share um, the email list with anyone. So just so you know that as well. But if you, um, we, re we would really like to um, have more uh, visibility of Alaska women veterans and having that having you submit your photo would be a great way to do that as well. So there's lots of ways to get involved from submitting your photo, being on the email list, or to becoming involved um, in the meetings. And all of our, our meetings are online right now, so it's an easy. You can outlying areas, please. This is if, even if you can join by phone. If the internet service isn't good, um, please join us. Vanessa, we have one last comment that I think is good to share. It says, um, I'm happy for this operation. I have been retired 11 years and this made me rethink using the VA because I have been one of those that felt it was too much work. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I really thank you for coming, for being here. I wanna thank all the women veterans. We'd like to thank each of you for joining us today. We wanna to thank every woman veteran for our service and know that we see and acknowledge you. We see and acknowledge you. We'll continue to work to ensure that all women veterans in Alaska has, have access to services they've earned and the resources they need. 
So please go on and like our Facebook page, our Instagram page, and here is the um, web page, operationmarylouise.org. And uh, thank you all and thank you to everyone. And again, to the Rasmussen Foundation, Alaska Community Foundation, uh, my colleagues at UAA, everybody, Penny, everybody on the steering committee, just thank you so much for your involvement with this project. It couldn't have, been, couldn't have happened without you and just honored to be um, doing this project and to continue it and to really allow um, us to see and hear veterans, women veterans in Alaska. So thank you all for being here. <laughs>